Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm going to do some video on the Fairmont. That's right. Why? Because the 2018 Mustang still isn't fixed. The latest from Ford is that there is not a superseded part number for the shift fork. What does that mean? That means they're going to put in exactly what's in it. The same part number that came out of it is going to go back in it. So I guarantee it's going to break. I almost guarantee it's going to break again. And I'm going to make sure I catch that on video because if that sucker breaks three times, that is lemon law. So I, I ain't going to play that shit. Um, they're not going to supersede the part number. Then that means they're not revising it. So it means it's going to break again more than likely. So anytime I go wide open throttle, it's going to get on camera. But let's talk about the Fairmont, okay? A lot of you guys that are interested in the Fairmont project um, have been waiting to see what kind of engine I'm going to put in it. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about what's been going on with the car. Um, last time I checked, um, I was talking to someone from Australia. And my hopes was to get a Barra engine into this car. But... Unfortunately, that's not going to work for a couple of reasons. Logistically, it's a pain in the ass to get it over here. Parts availability, I'm sure Australia is full of bar engines, but I'm nowhere near Australia. And I can get a Coyote engine for about half the cost that it would take to get a bar engine sent over here, tuned with all the supporting parts, and I can make more power with a Coyote engine. Now, the bar engine is awesome. Talking to MFP Australia, they've been really great. They offered me some stuff, but at the end of the day, didn't make any monetary sense because I have access to coyotes left and right based on you know power by the hour so I did pick up a gen 2 coyote what is a gen 2 coyote 15 to 17 Mustang engine GT let's go in there and take a peek and I'm gonna show you what my plans are and the power adder yes it's gonna have a power adder right away I'm not gonna wait around so let's take a look at the engine real quick well there she is gen 2 coyote engine from a 2015 Mustang um, it, I'm not sure I'm about mileage or anything like that, but it does have a set of oil pump gears from, I believe, <clears throat> ha, NPR, I believe NPR oil pump gears, crank sprocket it's from a 2015 Mustang. This engine was supposed to go in uh, homeboy's car, um, Garrett Mitchell, also known as Cletus McFarlane. If you look at one of his videos where he received the engine in, um, you know, he goes through it real quick and kind of talks to you about it. This is basically a bone stock coyote engine. All the only upgraded internals are the crank sprocket and oil pump gears. That is it. Everything else about it is bone stock, Gen 2, Gen 2 cams, Gen 2 everything. So my plan is to run a control pack from Ford Racing. And I'm going to couple it to a... I'm not sure if you can see it that well in here. But this is a Ben Calamer built MT82. Now, the biggest... Sorry about the uh, lack of light. Let me see if I can get a flashlight going. There we go. Okay, so the Ben Calamar built MT82 is a uh, G-Force uh, gear set. So Ben Calamar offers like the ultimate package, a 1,000 plus horsepower MT82 that can take, you know, the 1,000 horsepower capable, meaning it can just take it all day. The gears are not going to break. The biggest issue with these MT82s was the gear set. Um, the gears were actually really weak from the factory. Ben Calamar had upgrade packages for the forks, upgrade packages for <clears throat> synchros and stuff, but... At the end of the day, the gears were the weak link. So he talked to G-Force and got himself a insanely badass gear set. And I told him, hey, get me one. So this guy, along with this guy, are going to be pretty much what's going to be in the Fairmont. So Gen 2 Coyote engine and an MT-82 by Ben Calamer. I will be running a Mantic clutch. That is, in my opinion, the baddest clutch out there. So I'm just waiting on Jeff Gurko to get me pricing on it. And then we're going to start the party. So now let's talk about Power Rider. Okay, so... I do want to run a supercharger in this car, but I don't want to run something I already have. I'm very familiar with the blower setup on, you know, like a VMP blower, uh, like a Gen 3 or even a 2.3, like a Gen 2 or Gen 2R. I already have it, been there, done that. I did it with the black car. I want to do something totally different. So after looking at other superchargers, I like centrifugals. They're great. They make good power, but they just don't have the low end grunt that I need. I want that instant power. Now, I don't want to have to wastegate it. I don't want to have to do a torque booster setup. Even though the Fairmont's going to be light, I do not want to do any of that shit. I want power now. After driving some Whipple kits, they make good power. But honestly, if you've ever driven a 2.65 equipped supercharged engine, meaning a VMP Gen 3 or anything like that, it's not even close. The power delivery is instant and that's what I like. I like getting in and out of situations if I'm driving around or things like that. I want to be able to just put it to the wood and just roast the tires, whatever gear I'm in. So 
I want a 2.6 equipped uh, power adder, but I don't want a Roush supercharger. And I don't want another VMP supercharger. I've had two. I've had one in my black car and I have one in my red car. Um, and I'm very happy with it, but I just don't want it. So I started looking around um, and believe it or not, another company does offer a 2.6 rotor pack in their supercharger. And I'll show you who that is right now, which I will be using. Uh, they're a company that's been around a real long time. But when it comes to the supercharger game, for whatever reason, um, people don't really talk about them, so I'm going to try to change that. So I'll see if I can talk to them, pick one up, but I'm going to show you the supercharger that I'm really interested in. And I'll talk to them, see what the deal is, see what kind of moolah we're talking about. But I want to kind of show you what I'm thinking for a couple of reasons. Hood clearance, uh, not to be the same as everyone else out there. And it still has a 2.6 liter rotor pack that I'm really fond of. So after looking at the supercharger, um, I think in the right hands that... Oops, upside down with the intercooler on top and rotors on the bottom. Um, I think it's something that is beneficial. Look, Cadillac guys have had that blower set up for a long time. ZR1s are like that. And this is a 2.6 rotor pack. So the 2.6 rotor pack, I would hope that Edelbrock has some kind of bigger inlet or something like that. I don't know, but I'm going to try to find out as much information as I can. But I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to get a hold of Edelbrock. Talk to them, get as much information as possible and relay it back to you guys because I really... I don't know, I want, to, I want to rep something different and I want to see how much power can be made with a Edelbrock version 2650. So hopefully when I talk to them, we'll see if they're receptive. I'll get some data based on, you know, what kind of inlet they have, what kind of cold air they have. I haven't really seen much on the kids. Even if you go on the website, you don't really see too much information. So I'll get back to you guys as to what I find out with Edelbrock and their 2650 uh, version for the five liter. Also, for fuel system, um, real quick, I got with Deechworks and I got one of their DW400 pumps. It's a, it's a good size little sucker. And this is an in-tank pump and I'm gonna have to get a uh, some kind of uh, different little little pickup for, for the Fox Body. So I'll have to get a newer Fox Body tank or like a 96 and up tank. Put this guy in there, it's E85 compatible. I actually bought this guy so I don't think that I'm getting shipped for free because this ain't that good of a channel. Uh, real quick, I'll just show you what's going on here um, with the spec sheet and everything. It you know kind of shows you what the deal is, but that's what I'm gonna go with, and I might need two of these guys because the plan is to make north of 900 rear wheel horsepower through a manual. That's my goal, and I hope this Edelbrock head unit can uh, party. So I'll get a hold of the guys, see what's going on. I like the design, I like the in, I like I like everything about it. I just have to figure out pulley configuration, cold air heat exchanger, and a bunch of other things. So I just thought I'd give you guys an update on the Fairmont because the 2018 is MIA. The red car is slated to go to the track once the weather sort of cools down because track temps now are just ridiculous. But I just wanted to keep you guys updated on the Fairmont because that project is chugging along. Keep, uh, keep in touch for updates and I'll try to get you guys as much info as possible on the Fairmont, red car, and the 18. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you later.